So this video is a lecture for the last diminisher method. This is the next of the negotiation techniques we are using in the fair share chapter. Uh, the last diminisher method is a technique for sharing something that can be carved up in infinitely many different ways. Often the subject that's being carved is a parcel of land. Land can be carved up um, in very uh, irregular shapes uh, to, to make each of the negotiators happy with the end result. Uh, the method starts by randomly assigning order for the participants to inspect the pieces that are being claimed as fair shares. And we'll say here's our first uh, of the rules for this method. Establish an order for the participants. We'll call them players one, player two, player three, all the way up to the nth player. And that the first player will start every round of negotiations until player one receives a fair share, at which time the next person in the established order will step up as the lead negotiator. So here's just an example for establishing the order of play. If we have four participants saying their names are Mike, Trisha, Kerry, and John, we could draw straws to establish order, or we could simply assign order alphabetically. However, once this order is established, we must stick to it throughout all the rounds of negotiation. So if we follow an alphabetical order, we see that John is the first player, uh, Carrie's the second, Mike is the third, and Trisha is the fourth. So this is like a lineup for a team or a batting order, and you follow that same order over and over. John will start every single round of negotiations until John receives his fair share, at which time Kerry will take over if she's still in the game. Once a player receives a fair share, they are removed from the negotiations, but the order of the remaining participants stays the same. So just to have a visual of what negotiations might look like, um, we have a parcel of land here, and you can see that there is a carve out of the first piece. So let's read through the negotiations. It says each round starts with the leading pair, player cutting out a piece called the C piece. So that's the claim piece. Each player then in order will inspect the piece to determine if they think it is a fair share. And if it is more than a fair share, they must trim the C piece to be exactly a fair share to them. This is called diminishing, and its purpose is to discourage the other players from wanting to claim this piece if you want it for yourself. So in this drawing, we see that player one would make this initial cut. So this is a claim by player one. And if player two says, well, that's a fair share or more than a fair share to me, I will diminish it. And when player two diminishes it, um, player two cuts it down to exactly a fair share in player two's eyes. Now, once player two trims it, player one no longer wants it because now it is less than a fair share to player one. So player one doesn't want the piece anymore, but the other reason that player two trimmed this piece was to discourage players three or four from wanting it. If they've cut it enough that it's still a fair share to player two, hopefully it's enough that player three or four will say it's not a fair share and they no longer want it. But in this image, we see there is an oil well on it, so anyone who might want to develop the economic benefit of the oil well might be willing to say, well, I'll trim even more out of this and say that is fair because they're just looking for that oil well. Or other pieces of land, people might be looking for uh, forests or waterfront property or whatever it is about the land that gives it value. They might be willing to give up the size of the land to maintain certain features of the land for themselves. So that's how the last diminisher method works. So just to recap, the last player to diminish the C piece in the round is the one who wins that piece as their fair share. And once you get a, a fair share, you are out of the game because each player is only entitled to one fair share. And this is why the method is called the last diminisher method. The last person to diminish gets to keep it. Now, 
there is this one um, technique for diminishing that might not sound like diminishing, and that is that we can diminish zero. That means they did not trim the piece at all, but they've claimed that they diminished zero, and if they're the last person to claim a diminishing of the piece, then they get to keep it. Now, diminishing by zero has one special case where it becomes beneficial, and that is if you are the last player in a round. The last player can diminish zero if it is more than a fair share. And the last player in a round is the only one that can ever earn more than a fair share. And we've seen this happen before with divider chooser methods that dividers are always going to get exactly a fair share, but choosers have the potential to get more than a fair share. And that same feature holds true with the last diminisher method. Diminishers before the last person in the round will get exactly a fair share, but if you're the last person in the round, it's like being a chooser where you can get more than a fair share. So let's look at an example together. Example one says a piece of land with a market value of $300,000 is divided by four players. So from that first sentence, we can determine what constitutes a fair share for each of the players. So we'll start by saying $300,000 dollars divided by four players that gives us seventy five thousand dollars per player and that is our fair share so since seventy five thousand is a fair share that means that the c piece when cut by player one, is worth 75,000 to player one. And after player one cuts that piece, then player two looks at it and says, I think this piece is worth 65000 and that's less than a fair share. So player two says, I'm going to pass on this piece. So that same piece comes over to player three. Player three inspects the piece that player one says is worth 75000 And player three says, I think it's worth 85000 so now player three must trim it to $75,000 according to player three's view. But once the trim occurs, player one no longer wants the piece. Player one thinks that it's now worth less than $75,000. Player three now is considered the owner of the piece because right now player three is the last diminisher. But this modified piece comes to player four. And even though player three trimmed it, player four still thinks it's worth 80,000, which is more than a fair share. But since player four is the last player of the round, player four can say diminish zero. and collect an $80,000 piece. So at the end of that round, player four gets a fair share. Player four believes that they got 
$80,000 worth of the land. So when we come over to these questions, we can say, well, determine which players were diminishers. We saw that player three was a diminisher and player four is the diminisher. Player four diminished zero, but still considered a diminisher. Question B says, determine which player gets a fair share at the end of round one and the value of that share to the player. So player four gets fair share worth $80,000. And question C uh, says, fill in the blanks. Round two, who's going to make the first cut? And because player one is still in the game, player one will make the first cut. The value of the R piece. Now, the R piece stands for the remainder piece. After the C piece is collected, there is a remainder piece of land, and that has to have enough value for the other three players. So the value of the R piece to each of the remaining players is, and here they want us to use an inequality symbol. And because each player thought that the piece that player four collected was worth either $75,000 or less than $75,000, we can say that 300,000 minus 75,000 is equal to $225,000. So everyone either thinks the R piece is worth 225,000 or more, because if you subtract less than 75,000, the remainder piece would be worth more. So we will put the greater than or equal to and the value here should be 225,000. And it will always be greater than or equal to the fair share subtracted from the value. Okay, so here's a second example. Pause the video here, work it out on your own. Once you've finished working out the problem, unpause the video and follow along with my solution to see if you've done it correctly. Example two, a piece of land with a market value of 300,000 is divided by five players. So a fair share is equal to 300,000 divided by five. which is equal to $60,000 each. <clears throat> so they're going to use the last diminisher method. They'll follow the order of play, P1, P2, P3, P4, P5. And it says round one, player one makes the first cut. We know that According to player one, the C piece is worth the fair share of 60000 After player one makes the cut, player two inspects it, and it's less than a fair share, so player two says pass. That same piece then goes before player three, it is less than the $60,000 fair share. Player three says pass. Player four then inspects it and thinks it is worth 85,000. So player four must trim the piece to a fair share, which is now worth $60,000 to player four. When player four trimmed it, that means that each of these values now went down. Player three now thinks it's worth less than 55,000. 
Player two now thinks it's worth less than 50,000, and player one now thinks it's worth less than 60,000. When that same piece that is trimmed gets to player four, or sorry, player five we're on, player five says, I still think the piece is worth 70,000. And player five is going to say trim zero off of the piece. and claim a $70,000 piece. And that is because player five is the last diminisher. Now, alternatively, if player five did not think it was a fair share, Player four would have won the piece because player four would have been the last diminisher, but player four would have won it at 60,000. The reason player four cuts it is to discourage player five from wanting it. In this case, player four did not discourage player five. They didn't trim it enough. But if player four trimmed it more, player four would have felt like it was less than a fair share. And that's how this last diminisher method works. So the only player that can ever get more than a fair share is the last player in a round. Now, after round one, player five will be out because they won their piece already. Player four would be the last player for round two and could potentially um, win more than a fair share if a similar situation were to arise. So now we'll go over to our um, questions and answer those, determine which players were diminishers in round one, and we see that player four trimmed a piece and player five trimmed zero, so we will say P4 and P5 were diminishers. Determine which players get a fair share at the end of round one and the value of that share to the player, and we say P5 wins a $70,000 piece. And round two will begin with player one making the first cut. And the R piece will have greater than or equal to, and we're going to say 300,000 minus a fair share. So greater than or equal to 240,000. Now that R piece has that value to the players that remain in the game. Player five is out of the game, already got his fair share. So all of the players left in the game either thought the piece that player five got was $60,000 or less. And if we subtract that from 300,000, 300,000 minus 60,000 gives us a balance of 240,000. And Everyone thought it was 60,000 or less. So if you subtract less than 60,000, then it would be greater than 240,000. So it's 240,000 or more according to each of the players. Okay, so that's the end of the lecture. You can take notes from this, rewatch it, and then practice the problems in the worksheet. The first worksheet has an answer key. The second worksheet is homework and is due for our following class.